Welcome back to Rediscovering America, sponsored by these guys. The east coast of New York is known for metrosexual men and nursing martinis. But on the flip side of the coin, here in western New York, they're known for beers, bellies, and beating the ever-living shit out of each other. The mere mention of a flip of a coin probably sent these rambunctious Rust Belt ruffians into a fit of rage. Let's find out if there's any truth to these stereotypes. First up, beers. And what better place to crush them than a booze cruise on one of the canals Western New York is famous for. Welcome aboard Lock Q4 here for a cruise on the Erie Canal. A couple of quick things. Uh, we do have some uh, light snacks and beverages available uh, for you if you need something while we're going to lock. I'll be telling you guys about the canal as we're cruising. You guys told me this was going to be like a party boat. I've been on a lot of booze cruises. They all start off slow. Everyone's nervous. We don't like know the other people. But no one's drinking. Where are all the girls? Where are all the chicks? We're pulling away from the dock and there's not near a chick. Well. Now up around the bend, we got Lockport's, I guess you could say infamous upside down railroad bridge. It's called that for kind of obvious reasons. It looks upside down. We got Locks 34 and Beer 35 me. here in Lockport. Slow down, brother. Bro, canal, canal beers are five. easily my top five beers. Five locks to go up the canal, five for coming down. Are there any celebrities from Lockport or famous people of any kind? Any criminals? Uh, famous criminals? None that, none that come to mind. Do you know of any? Timothy McVeigh is from here, this town. Timothy McVeigh? And, uh, Timothy Oklahoma City bomber. Oh. Originally there were 83 when the canal first opened. <sighs> This part is going to be sort of like Splash Mountain because we, we have to change elevation. It's going to be like one of those flume rides. Oh, we're going to be wet, soaked. Oh yeah, we're going to be soaked. They're going to they're going to take a photo, so like smile and stuff. A lock before a canal is a lot like a chastity belt. Yeah. So you can see the water starting to get turbulent right next to us as well. Oh shit, dude. You see the water line in the gates and wells around us, see how high we have got Dude, we are getting lifted, bro. Now, before the canal was here, getting across New York State, Albany to Buffalo would have been done by stagecoach. That took somewhere between six and eight weeks. Lame. As we're nearing the top of the lot, or top of the lot, you can start seeing over the lot. Going up. So on a Tuesday, there is some there is bitches in the club and they groove, eh? I don't think this is a booze cruise. That's once we get through the locks. Someone's praying the rosary down there. Yeah. Now that we were finally through the locks, sit back, relax, enjoy the ride. Need a drink or a snack? Tim's got you covered back there. It was time to crank this party up a notch. Oh shit! Oh shit! Sorry. So this clearly isn't your first canal cruise. No, it isn't. I've been here many times. Do these things get rowdy? It's a good time. I've been having a blast so far. Have you? Yeah. All right. Well, I was just about to get a, a round of Don Julio shots for the boys, and I would love to buy you one. Whatever it is. Yeah, I'll try one. Okay. Let's see, four Don Julio shots? Unfortunately, we don't have a liquor license, so I can't give you that. We're actually sponsored by Labatt Blue Light. Have you ever tried one of these? It's a very good beer, yeah. My husband drank that. I think I have a spare beer, if you would like one. All right, I'll try one. Oh, great. Sweet. This one's for you. This one's for you. Cheers, Betty. We're crushing locks. Pop, lock, and drop it. I was fresh out of beer, but luckily when you need more Labatt in Western New York, you can go straight to the source. We've been drinking a lot of Labatt on these trips, so it's an honor to finally meet a Labatt man. Uh, awesome. Uh, my name is Ryan Brady. I'm the brewmaster here at the Labatt Brew House, and we are in Buffalo, New York. What do you guys do at this brew house? Here we do kind of one-off experimental uh, brews. You guys have any ideas for a new Labatt product they should roll out? Something a little violent, maybe? 
violent. Yeah, it like hurts when you open it. Yeah. <laughs> so we put spikes in the can. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. Good idea. You should put out a beer called La Battery Acid. <laughs> I'm thinking like 20 to 26 ABV. Sure. Uh, I'm not sure the legal team would go for the name, but we could certainly think about it. Would I be able to just have a a sip of something you have on yeah, tap here? Yeah, absolutely. Brother, Nikki needs his medicine right yeah. now. <laughs> I hate seeing Nikki like this. He needs it now, he's fiending. So right now we've got we've got a few different things on tap. We do have a mango guava sour. Mango guava sour sounds a little metrosexual for the typical Buffalo resident. That's actually our fastest selling grill we have here. So it just goes to show you, you, you can't peg people for, for being in one thing. Pour me a tipple. Absolutely. Looking at me, you'd think I'm more of an IPA guy, but you can't peg me. Refreshing. It's got real fruit in it. It's good. Like it? it's, it's fantastic. Well, it's very good. It's actually really I'm good. Thrilled. Do you feel like the fruit is softening the people of Buffalo? No. 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 With the winters here, I think that's impossible. Do you think the sports teams not being as horrendous as in the past is softening the people? No. I think that the fandom is still, I mean, they're still crazy. Like, you, you would think that with the peaks that we've had the last couple of years, that maybe all the table smashing and the craziness that you see down at the stadium would, would lessen. And I would I would say that all that is increased. Yeah. It's a happy rage. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, this is a city of good neighbors, so people are friendly while they're insane. So how does one even go about making a beer this fruity? Well, we can go down uh, and look at the tanks and we can talk through the process of, of making the beer. Can I punch one of the barrels? It, it, hey, it's your hands. All right, sit. <laughs> How'd it feel? Not great. <laughs> I'm glad I did it though. <laughs> All right, that hurt my shoulder. The first step of the brewing process is the brew day. Um, these tanks behind us are the brewing system. Um, this one directly behind me is the mash tun. After it's in there for an hour, it'll go into the next tank, uh, which is called the louder tun. So this is kind of like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Do you ever fear an Augustus Gloop type situation? It's certainly possible, I guess, if we let someone up there. Usually we try to keep them down here, away from there, so they don't. we don't have an issue like Just that. Just the fat ones? <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, the thin ones can go up there. Yeah. And... Well, the really fat ones won't fit through the little doors on top. So we, we by design. <laughs> gotta keep the gluttonous ones away. <laughs> That's so. right, yeah. Mm. What's the ABV on this? Five percent. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, so you can have a lot of them. Not me, I'm a lightweight. One of these I'm gonna be throwing neck. Come down to the Labatt Brew House on the banks of the Buffalo River. Now imagine, if you will, a bus so short that the cool kid that sits in the back is also sitting in the front. Impossible, you may think. <laughs> People in Western New York love to eat and the region is famous for all sorts of cuisine, such as garbage plates, the signature dish of Rochester, New York. How is it, Donnie? It tastes like garbage. This is a regional delicacy? What is wrong with the people here? Fucking New England's got lobster rolls? Philly has cheesesteaks? New York has pizza? People in Rochester just have a pile of slop? Disgusting slop. Garbage plates respectfully belong in the garbage. But buffalo wings, the signature dish of buffalo, definitely belong in our bellies. And we knew just where to go to get the best wings in town. Wingnuts, a tiny yet charming mom and pop chicken wing shop nestled in the dark corners of a Knights of Columbus. And you guys, we are so excited to show you what this place has to offer. I know what you're thinking. A much larger, much more successful show has already been here and has done a video. But they were a duo and we're a trio. The first Barstool trio to ever come to Wingnuts. That's Barstool history. Let's put this place on the map. Unlike the buffalo sauces, which are what the bars have and what the pizzerias have, the wingnut sauces are completely different recipes. 
they're nothing alike. If you wanted to try all four, I would recommend 10 mild, 10 medium, five hot, five honey garlic. Look at the size of this one. Where's the hot? Small one. That's a small one? Yeah. Look at the two different hues. It's like going from Wolverine to Notting Hill. Mm. That's Hugh, Hugh Jackman and Hugh Grant. <laughs> I didn't even. <laughs> what you're eating today is what you'll get next week, next month, next year. We've never once ever served a different wing. These are incredible. My mother put it best. She said, nobody knows what you're talking about till they buy it. Since part of my take came here, has anything changed? When we first opened, we were getting people from all over the world. Because of Barstool, it's happening all at once. We've got October orders from Australia. You're kidding. And they all come here. Two Super Bowls ago, we did in seven hours in this tiny little room, 2,200 wings. Can you tell us a little bit more what role God played in your success? God is part of my life every day. I teach an adult Bible study right out of this room on Tuesday mornings. And um, I, I've made it my life's work to show people that God is real and that uh, the Bible's true. And I can prove it. You know, people think the Bible is antiquated and everything else. This is a New Testament. In Revelation, the last book of the Bible, and I looked and behold a white horse, and he who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and conquered. When you read, he had a bow. In Greek, that word is T-O-X-O-N. He had a toxin in the shape of a crown. That's Corona, guys. Oh, sheesh. Wow. Oh, okay. Jeez. I can see that. Okay, this is how why. You, how did you figure this out? I, I went to Bible college. Do you know who the three angels are that are going to save us from the apocalypse? No, because they're not. Oh. Size, crunchiness, and size. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jesus is going to do it. But check this and out. Jesus. Yes, because remember, he's the so. one who paid the price. In the Gospel of Matthew, the book of Matthew, it's the first book in the New Testament. This is where Jesus is telling us all the stuff that's going to happen at the end of the world. And oh, by the way, that's us. You think we're living in the end of times right now? Absolutely, I can prove it. Oh, wow. But it, I can't do it in five minutes. Sure. In chapter 24, verse 7, Jesus is telling the guys, he's saying, so nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There'll be famines, pestilences, earthquakes. And all of these things are the beginning of sorrows. So check this out. First of all, in the Greek, the word for kingdom is where we get the English word ethnicity. So it's nation against nation, ethnic group against ethnic group. Isn't that what's been going on? That's apt, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then when you it's read- Going on for a while. Right. And then you read, all of these are the beginning of sorrows. That's a time frame. Okay. We have, as a, as a world, we have taken the step into the beginning of sorrows. And once we're there, there is no going back. And Do you think Jesus was a wings guy? <laughs> well, I'm sure they ate chickens. Yeah, yeah. no, I'm sure. They I must mean, have eaten I, eggs. You know, who knows how they cooked it, but the Bible is written by God and it's all true, every single word of it. If someone didn't believe in the Bible, I feel like they would after a few of these wings. <laughs> yeah. I can't thank you guys. No, I, I really do appreciate this. Thank incredible you. experience. Yes. Top to bottom. After a healthy dose of wings and God, it was time for dessert. And it just so happens Western New York is the birthplace of America's favorite sweet treat. Well, my name is Lynn Belushio. I'm the director of the Jell-O Museum here in Leroy, New York. And we're glad you came here today to learn all about Jell-O. So what's your favorite flavor? I'm a blue raspberry guy. I'm an orange man myself. You're an orange man? And? I love the pineapple. You're a pineapple person. Weird. Okay. Weirdos, huh? Weirdos. You know, it's hard to get pineapple. Sure. I have a box. Before you leave, you we'll should make see sure you the get... things I've done for pineapple. Oh, really? Yeah. So what's your favorite flavor? 
Uh, oh, yeah. Wild strawberry. And I haven't tried Mr. Wiggle, which is the one that's, you know, got more sugar in it than... Needs. It's Mr. Wiggle flavored? Oh, yeah, because it would, it would make the kids convulse? No, it's just that they liked it because there was lots of sugar in it. Is Jello a solid or a liquid? Because it's kind of blowing my mind. Thermo-reversible. Do you just invent a state of matter? Solid, liquid, gas, and then Jello? Jello is one of the few things that is that way, and it, and it has to do with a couple things. Number one... Does um, Jello exit your body as pee or... Poop. I can't answer that. I think it would be pee. I would think it would Is be it? A, a, like a thicker, more viscous Do stream really of pee. Do we go down this road? No. <laughs> no, no. I just had to have a colonoscopy a while ago, and of course, you know, they put you on jello. And oh, so that may be okay. Uh, well, it's supposed to, you know, Maybe it's poop. supposed to. Well, we have an unusual um, exhibit here at the Jello Museum, and this is um, this is a giraffe, and it's a real giraffe, but he was stuffed. And the story is, the circus was in town, was in Leroy, and unfortunately the giraffe died. There was a taxidermist over in Caledonia, and he thought he'd like to try stuffing it. But guess what? Jello used a giraffe for their advertising. There was uh, this wonderful giraffe that appeared in their animal collection in the 50s, and he talks about why he wants to eat Jello. So why did the giraffe want to eat Jello? Uh, we have to look at that ad. I think it's over here. Oh, I, you can, can you read it? When I'm eating Jello, I wish I were a giraffe because Jello feels so good when it slides down your throat, and the giraffes have longer throats to slide down. That is the best part of eating Jello: yeah, the throat slide. He's our mascot. We have a dead animal mascot too. Oh, and I certainly would love to see him. I think maybe the two of them should meet. KB, would you like to do the honors? Mm -hmm. You're the one who paid 600 bucks for it. Oh. Goodness gracious. Yeah. Oh, look at him. This is Alan with two A's, like the battery. What did you say he was? A, St a Steinbeck. A Steinbeck. For six fifty, it can be yours. Yeah. Uh, Five fifty. I I'd, I'd, I'd rather have a box of Jake. candy candy corn Jello. When was the last time you went a week without Jello? Mm. I like Jello. But there are some things that I want to put stuff in it. And that's the other interesting thing about Jell-O is you get a box of Jell-O and it's like, what can I do with it? I don't like lime unless it's got cubed apples, celery, and walnuts in it. What so it's walled up salad. Oh, yeah. And it's individually molded in those little molds. And so everybody got that on their salad. People don't mold Jell-O. Yeah, like, they like, they to, to, yeah. like they used to. Not like they used to. Not like they used to. part of their instructions frequently was how to unmold it because that's always the conundrum. I read in the forums that once it's molded, you can put it in the microwave and it goes back to its liquid form. Sure it will. I don't think you need to hit the forums or message boards to figure that out. It I, I, I was me that posted on the forum. It's a double helix, you know, you, I can give you the... Wait, there's DNA yeah. in Jell-O? Well, I don't, maybe there is, I've never... Is Jell-O alive? Oh. What do the human brain and a bowl of lime Jell-O have in common? They have similar brain waves when tested on an EEG machine. You cannot use brain waves as a way of declaring somebody dead because even a bowl of jello will give you positive brain waves. Flubber was a sentient jello, right? Yeah. That's controversial. Utah consumes the largest capita, per capita consumption of jello, and Salt Lake City. Um, even beats them out, and their favorite flavor is lime. What's so, that? Yeah, for people that say Utah's boring, oh. think again. Mormons, man. If you can't do drugs, what's the second best thing? Lime. Yeah, yeah. it's like amphetamines to them. In this case, we have the story of the Jell-O girl. She was actually a real little girl. Um, her photograph was used for advertising for a long time. Her father actually worked for the advertising agency in New York City that handled the Jell-O account. I prefer these kids over the last Jell-O mascot. Well, well, yeah. A little yeah. more pure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Did museum attendance take a hit after the whole scandal with he who shall not be named? Um, no, not really. Yeah. I mean, we had people come in and say, you know, was, was he ever here? Well, yeah, he was here, you know. Um, and Ooh, who? He who shall not be named. Voldemort. Yeah. He had been with the company for a long and you used to be able to, you know, watch some of his ads. I'm and lost. We just felt that that Voldemort. was kind of inappropriate. No Smosby. Yeah. Oh, Cosby. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that was kind of awkward. We were getting phone calls, even though we don't represent the company, yeah. you know, and and that was hard for us. And so we had to say, if you have if you have concerns, here's a number you should call because we're not connected with the company. Right. And you disavowed quickly. Like there are some some yeah. blank areas here to where yeah. it's kind of shaped like him. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, but you know, he was involved with getting 
um, that voted as the most famous dessert in Utah. So. I wonder if Carl Malone ever indulged. <laughs> Well, we're standing in front of the wall of molds. There are over a hundred. You know what that would make? What would that make? A jello shot. That would. I'll give you a copy of my dad's recipe for jello shots. It was called gin jello because he made it with gin. When I used to just like cry nonstop, like I was probably four or five, my mom would just slip me one jello shot, boom, right to bed. Oh. Yeah. yeah. It was great. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. Because I got jello, my mom got some peace and quiet. Oh. Boom. Win win. Yeah. There you go. Now, would you say Jello is the most versatile food? I think it's kind of interesting because people want to do something with it. So, do I add fruit? You know, canned fruit to it? Do I put carrots in it? You know, what do I do with it? A box of Jello is just a blank canvas, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, there's some flavors I think, or some colors that are more adaptive. It's like I was saying to you, what do you put in blue Jello? A Labatt blue light. There you go. There you go. Somebody got to try it. It's an excellent idea. Is there a carriage museum in the basement here? Uh, we have a transportation exhibit downstairs. And we have carriages, and we have an ox cart, and we have a jello wagon. Well, this is our jello wagon, and actually it's my jello wagon that I donated to the museum. And we actually used it in competition. We had a Black Morgan Stallion, and uh, did fairly well. Um, our horse was a, a grand champion right. between Canada and the United States, and uh, so we, we, we had a really good time. And when the judges would come around, for example, when they came to the back of the beer wagons that we competed against, you know, they'd open up the back and the judges would have a little beer. Well, we opened the back and gave everybody jello shots. Hell yeah. <laughs> Grease the palms a little bit. Yep. Oh yeah. While Jell-O may be soft and fruity, the people of Western New York have a reputation for being hard and angry. And at Buffalo's Rage Room, they can channel that anger into breaking inanimate objects. Buffalo is depressing, and the only cure for depression is rage. Women go to therapy, men bottle it up until they explode. It's June 1st, the first day of Pride Month, and I'm fucking pissed at homophobia. Yeah! Ah! Mummy always loved her wine more than me. Uh, one cream of mushroom and one decaf coffee. The bat wins. So your typical clientele is who? Um, I get a lot of female customers. That's what I thought. Might be angry at their husbands, boyfriends. Yeah, they probably just tried cleaning the plates. <laughs> they probably come in here and organize. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say the females here are like, not in a bad way at all, but just uh, have more masculine energy? I'd say they like to have fun. Yeah, no, I mean, I've seen girls happily getting fingered in the parking lot outside the stadium. I've seen girls marry Dana Beers. Uh, do you consider yourself a member of Bill's Mafia? I do. How important to Bill's culture is rage, violence, pain? I think 
we like to get a little over the top sometimes. Mm -hmm. Seen the uh, seen the yeah. tables. Do some people bring tables in here just to break them with their body? Uh, I've never had that happen before. Probably a little too much glass. Yeah, that might be a little too dangerous. Mm -hmm. You probably stopped a lot of murderers from really going that extra step. I, I would hope so. Uh, I'm glad to do my part. Or you taught some, you know, maybe some timid people, you showed them the fun of rage. Breaking things may be the most popular anger management technique in Western New York, but now we'd be meeting up with someone who chooses to release their aggression using the power of music. We're here with Dan Sprague the metal man of Western New York. Yeah! Thank you for having me. Yes. You were a huge fan of you. Huge fan. Thank you, I'm happy to hear that. How are we? I can't complain, so not, not snowing, so I'll take it. How did you end up on the streets? Um, the pandemic shut down all the open mics and stuff, which is where I would regularly play, so um, I ended up getting battery powered gear and just doing sidewalk shows. <laughs> So you play in three bands? I'm playing in more than that. It's hard to say for sure, but I can name off five for now for sure. Um, Let's I'm hear them. for A Short Eternity, which is my band. That's all my originals. Short Eternity. Um, I also play for Mutilation Station. Mutilation Station. I play for Election Day and um, Natives AD. So awesome. a lot of those band names are kind of brutal. Mutilation Station, but then you had Election Day in there? Yeah. What's the meaning behind that one? Nothing's more metal than an Iowa caucus. I'll be honest, I couldn't elaborate on that. That's the other guitarist's uh, brainchild in that band, okay. so I really... Filibusters, hanging chats. I'm just the That's bass metal. player, so I just show up and just lay down the... Gore, Al Gore! Gory Bush. Yeah, I guess politics are pretty metal. What's your most popular cover that you do? What gets the crowd going? Either Raining Blood or Careless Whisper. Oh, okay, the two, those are both have a lot in common. <laughs> I mean, the most popular band from Buffalo has to be the Goo Goo Dolls, and those guys aren't metal at all. They're kind of bitches. Uh, I'll be honest, I do enjoy them. I, I, think I do too. I heard a rumor that you were once let go from Kmart for shredding too hard. Um, I was let go from Walmart. For shredding? Um, for refusing to stop while playing, stop shredding while on my lunch break, yeah. I mean, one of the managers didn't care for it, I guess. I honestly have nothing bad to say about that place. I really enjoyed working there. Have you ever used that as a weapon? Um, not intentionally, but it's happened, I suppose. Unintentional? <laughs> yeah, I mean, sometimes if uh, people are standing around and you're not paying attention, you know, these people get Damn. smacked on the face sometimes. <laughs> How did you adopt the look? I mean, I was into wrestling growing up, so I kind of stole the sleeves from like the Hardy Boys and all that. And then um, the, the pants I've more or less been wearing since high school. I've, been, uh, I've got almost the entire collection of trip pants. So are you still into wrestling? Indeed. Actually just started training to be a wrestler myself. Now would you keep the Metal Man moniker or would you switch it up? I'm trying to keep it for both, yes. Uh, the stage name I've been trying to go with is Danny Christ. I think we need some metal names. I'd be the gender reveal. It's pretty metal. What would you be? Uh, I'd, I'd just be all purple. Purple Nick. So how did you transition from being a fan of watching professional wrestling on TV to wanting to try it yourself? I came from a household of uh, brothers and stuff that loved it too. So, and you know, um, naturally as kids, it's something we were trying moves on each other growing up. So um, I ended up finding a, a spot to train on accident. And I'm just thankful I came across the opportunity because it was it's something I always wanted to try back in the day. I just never really knew how to go about breaking into it. And that's probably a good therapy tactic to let that aggression out. And indeed it is. <laughs> We can't learn guitar overnight, but we could try out some wrestling. It's not a bad idea. It's an awful idea. Yeah. Well, I've been angry as hell. I need to let loose. I just need to exercise in general. You do, yeah. Let's give it a shot. All right. <sighs> Buffalo, there's only one pizza that matters. Car, bones, 
sweet, soft. Come get some ah, hot, flavorful, greasy pepperoni, mozzarella cheese. That sauce that tingles the back of your tongue for an enjoyable time. Car bones, the corner of Hamburg Street in South Park Avenue. And we are where? Daddy Ab Productions. And I know Barstool fans, you might not take the pro wrestling serious, but in this building, well, we take do. it, we take it very serious. I feel like Barstool needs a wrestling podcast. I agree. <laughs> After learning some basic wrestling fundamentals, it was time for a toughness test. How do we feel about giving some chops? We're chomping at the bit for some chops. Hey, okay. he's somebody want some chops. Yeah. Best way to explain it, you know Ric Flair? Yeah. It's the woo, I'm slapping him on the chest. I'm just getting like oh, five star on the chest. Pretty much. Okay. Yep. Okay. Oh, oh, go. Oh, 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 oh. Nikki Chomps! Wow! Now that's what I call Chomps, volume 10. Let's go. They're hitting us so hard. I'm bleeding. You're internally bleeding, dude. We survived the chomping block, and now we could learn the most important part of wrestling. I'm gonna grab your bones, and I'm gonna squeeze them until they break! How to cut a promo. Do you have any tips for us? If we want to get into the wrestling promo You have game. to believe what you say. Even if you might not necessarily agree with what you're saying, you have to convince in your mind that you're living that moment. I'm not thinking about where I'm going to go have lunch after this. We're not actors, and I'm tired of people saying that. No, we're reactors. We're going downtown, and we're going to fly away. You already know it's going down. It doesn't matter if it's on Sunday, Monday. Damon Resnick is here to teach you real pain. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. See, the next time, it's gonna be the two of us, the ring marshals, ain't the that full right? full dose. Well, you can throw your dose on me anywhere you want, and I'll spit it back out right in your face. Yeah, I don't really play games, but if you push my buttons, it's game over. Yo, I don't care what you are, I'll make your pink pussy blue and your blue eyes pink. Why don't you pick on someone your own size? Forwards, KB. No, don't drop him on his head. Don't. don't bring your girlfriend, or you'll see why they call me Backshot Backland. All right, Hayden, back shots with my girl. Lucky for you, I'm a fucking cuck. And you walked right into my trap. You're gonna destroy her pussy. You're gonna turn her inside out. She's gonna be screaming your name. Um, so far, I think the red shirt, awkward, white shirt. I already know she's talking shit, don't talk shit. White shirt, natural, but a little short. He might be the same height as me. Um, sunglasses, I think he's a little too old. I don't know, but style, style points. So when a wrestler shows up at Grabblers Anonymous, what is their end goal? Everyone that steps through here has the goal of making it. You know, some people fall off, some people have made it. We've had guys come through the gym. Uh, Daniel Garcia, he's wrestling John Moxley, I believe, in their main event. So, like, this place has produced very good talent. But there's all levels. Everyone's welcome. And Dude, fuck, I would just come here to get a good workout. A hundred percent. Now, I've many times just shown up for cardio. Their place puts you through the ringer. Is there something about growing up in Buffalo that makes you just want to... 
Grab some, Slam. dude. As you can see from our football fans, you've seen all the Bills Mafia yeah. highlights. Uh, I think this city, just because of the weather and just the lack of success from our sports teams, we really enjoy aggression. So I think we all lean towards wrestling in one way or another. Fuck. Yeah. I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. I'm we're not done yet. We were ready to officially call our first match. Schwan Ross versus Hayden Backlund. I'm here with Hayden Backlund, AKA Hay Fever, AKA Haystack, AKA put some back into it Backlund, AKA Hey Man. Let's fucking do this. Let's do it. Let's fucking go. Come on. Come on. Oh, yeah. We're born for this, Don. Hey, We're born for this. Ho, hey, ho, Let's go. Hey, oh, hey. shit. It's the haystack. It's the haystack. Oh, yeah. Fuck you, Schwab. No, yeah. yeah. Let's go, man. Oh, you got this, dude. Let's go. You got this. Oh. Touch my nipple. Touch my nipple. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Bell let's go. bottom yoga pants. Yeah, I hate both those fucking Hey, guys. you know what? You guys suck. You ever think about that? Donnie, fuck you. Rickety crickets over here. You're probably going to get hurt watching this match. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, okay? All right. Ow, I think my shit. elbow's broken. No, no, I'm good. I'm good. Fight's clean. Fight's clean. Fight's clean. Let's go, Schwanson frozen dinners. You're about as fresh as a cold slab of Hamburg steak. Fuck him up! Fuck him up! Give him that pig sock! Rip his ass all out! Oh, Schwanny thinks he's tough! All right, do as I taught you. Yeah, show off the bod! Rockin' bod! Oh, no. oh dude! Yeah. Get back up, Haiti! Don't let him do that shit to you! He's just a boy! Dude, it's fucking Schwan Ross, man! I don't know! I don't know. These guys are fucking pussy. I got this. Let's go. Get in there. Get him in there, Rep. Rep, what the fuck's going on? Pain his ass. Oh, no. They, no. Okay. Oh, fuck. That's all right. That's all right. Ah. No, no, no. It's just the back of your head. Boo. Give him an Australian sack whack. Yep, uh -oh. yep. Yeah, I like ah. that. I like that. Ah. Oh, sh what boy? What boy? Woo! Hey, fever! Yeah, punch his dick. Just tickle his balls. He'll get uncomfortable. Ah, He's got you in a fucking. Oh, yeah! Yeah, let's go, boy! That's my boy! Let's go, this back. This rap with. sucks! This rap sucks! Yeah! This rap sucks! This rap sucks! Guy! Stop! Oh, shit, dude. I've never seen KB like this before. Baby, hey, you're too. a fucking ref, dude. No one cares about you, dude. You're worse than Schwan Ross. Oh! Suplex City, bitch! Oh, God, what are you doing? What are you counting for? He's not pinning him. It's time to sing a Schwan song, buddy. Do not touch Hayden. Hayden can touch me. I'm the only man yep. Hayden can touch. Oh, dude. Get up. Are you good? Do we got to go to plan C? Yes. Yes. Oh, no, dude. Oh, God. That escalated quickly. It's time for plan C. Let's go, buddy. Just fucking unleash on him. Give him a Jordan furniture. Oh, yes. Fuck you, yeah. Nick. Yeah. Woo. Yes. 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 Hayden, you 
just ruined my fucking life. Hayden, you're fucking me in the ass here, buddy. I need you to get up, dude. You're really fucking me here. That was the easiest thing I've ever done. Can't you do something? Can't you just get up? Can't you just give Nick a sack tap or something, dude? That was fucking horrible. I look like a fucking clown up here. Oh my god, Donnie, I hate you so much. I don't associate with losers. Hey, Nick, come here. Come here, man. It was a good match. It was a good match. Whoa. Give me your fucking wiener. Try to grab my wiener. I even learned how to do that today. Oh, shit. Oh, no, Hayden. God damn it. Fuck. This is, I had no idea where this came from. You know, they took a beating. They took some chops, I respect it. Their bumps are horrible. They run the ropes like they don't have any legs, but we'll take it, you know? It's their first day. Who knows, that could be the next main event of WrestleMania. My money's on Donnie. Those sunglasses are a weapon, but... Thanks again, Barstool. You heard it from the hay man himself. We were the next big thing in wrestling. All we needed now were some costumes. Tender hair. I'm gonna be purple. Purple neck. I might just have to be Cruella because it's the only plus size costume they have here. Wait, that should be your wrestler name, just plus size Cruella Deville. Jacket with a cape and a choker. I would just need a wig. Thanks to the people of Western New York, we could finally call ourselves professional wrestlers. Born in the gym, but always destined for the ring. It's the Gender Reveal! You want to know the identity of Purple Nick? I'm the sad now! Fuck your DNA!